Hi, welcome to this edition of Read Woke with Meredith and a whole list of graphic novels that I think that you are going to really enjoy this fall. First on my list of recommended reads is Wake, The Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Re Revolutions. This is written by Rebecca Hall and illustrated by Hugo Martinez, and it is part memoir, part historical research, and all amazing. Full disclaimer, before I was a librarian, I was an archivist for the National Park Service, so this basically checks all of my boxes. I really appreciate this book because it combines the memoir with historical research in a way where it feels like Rebecca Hall is taking you through her origin story as a historian superhero, researching her ancestors' stories that were buried so deeply that they were found only because they were speaking to her. The way that she describes living in the wake of slavery and the way that Hugo Martinez inserts the historical ghosts of slaves and the reflections of puddles and the tall masted ships between the buildings in and along the waterfront in New York City show us how close to the past we really are existing. The historical research in the moving stories of enslaved people serves as a vehicle for delivering Hall's own story of resilience in the face of closed doors and dead ends of research, as the work, she does the work to honor her family, her ancestors, and bring her voice and the voices of those buried throughout the centuries to illustrated life. Next on my list is Jalea. So this book is by Junie Ba and I liked it so much that I took it to an outreach location for teenagers to keep. It is a heroic story of a slightly different kind. It's a story of a last prince fighting to fix the world. Uh, prince Mansour Kita is an unlikely hero that begrudgingly takes responsibility to help his people. The story has so much energy. It goes back and forth between narrators and in and out of the past and the present, and it has so much momentum. Now the story is based in West African myth, and the illustrations are inspired both by African culture and modern animation. So like think anime and kind of cartoon network type illustrations. And the dialogue and the rhythm of the speech echo hip-hop and are hugely rhythmic. So it really brings African culture to the present in a way that I feel like only a graphic novel can, giving us visual clues and an underlying story which our modern-esque characters live and struggle in. Okay, this brings us to The Secret to Superhuman Strength. Now, this is on my list because, well, I just love Alison Bechtel. I mean, just in general, but specifically, this is a great book for here and now.
Okay, next is Shadow Life. This is one of the most moving books that I've read in some time. And maybe it's because my grandmother's recently moved to a care center or because I feel like I've been confronted with death more than usual lately. But I feel as though this one is the most beautiful, pic one of the most beautiful pictures on aging that I've seen in some time. The measured countenance and resilience of this one woman's escape from a assisted living center is what sets the story in motion. But what I find to be so powerful about this story is that the, her individual stories of life and love come to light as we unearth her entire story and contribute to her commitment to love and life both. There are not so subtle but beautiful undertones about writing our own stories, our own myths, and living in traditions and routines that ground us and establish our own paths. Hiromi Goto and Anne Zhu do an incredible job of pairing this story with these mostly black and white and bluish images that somehow fill my heart with color. Um, the images of what the shadow looks like, the shadow of death coming to visit, check in, and um, have conversations with our heroine here, I think she's a hero, are really remarkable. And, um, you know, get ready to feel your feelings. It's gorgeous. And I have to end with the best feelings. Feelings, a story in season. Menjit Tap has given you a gift. She has given all of us a gift. I would encourage you to pick up this book as the August light bends and we transition into another season. I feel like this is a very big time of transitions for a lot of people. And personally, I could feel when August hit, the light started to bend and through the heat and the humidity, I could feel the shift in the seasons like no other summer exit that I can remember. And this book really speaks to my experience in trying to create balance as, you know, I have anxiety about sending my kids back to school and all the transitions that could otherwise wreck me in a year like this. Um, when I first glanced at the illustrations, it looked a little like a Gauguin painting, bold colors, which pair perfectly with the practice of this book, um, all of these images that just give you snippets of these moments remind us to live in the moment and give us pause as your eyes glance across a page at these panels. Um, I feel like the bold colors and the shapes pair gloriously with the sparse and subtle words that are added, creating an impact that settles these stories in my heart like cups of water poured from the hands of Thop. <gasps> Oh, it's just delightful. Is that too much? Is that too much book nerd going on? I feel like within these pages, there's much to learn about ourselves as humans, as we're connected to the cycles of the seasons and the range of emotions that we can all experience. But it's not pushy or preachy, and it settles us into understanding ourselves and humans as a whole. And I really feel like it encourages us to, be, to befriend our own self. Um, I don't know, just read it and love yourself and others a little more, please. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Read Woke. If you have any questions about the Read Woke Challenge, please contact the library at 319-261-READ or visit crlibrary.org. Thanks so much for watching.